I'm John Skinner and this supports chapter 11 in my book Fishing the Bucktail. The book covers bucktailing from surf and boat for a variety of species including striped bass, bluefish, and fluke. I'm fishing shallow water four to eight feet deep in a south shore bay on Long Island and uh, we've got plenty of time here so I'll be going through the tackle techniques and so forth and we'll just uh, watch these first couple of fish. Okay, so there's a couple of nice ones, um, but in reality what you're normally doing in this kind of fishing is you're going through a lot of small fish as well. So I'm going to run uh, four and a half minutes unedited here, and you'll just get a, a little feel for the pace of the action. Um, okay, so this rig, let's start with the rod. We've got a um, Quantum 6 foot um, rated 8 to 14 pound test line. It has a Quantum Accurist reel, and uh, what I like about the reel is that it has a flipping switch on it, so I'm able to use a thumb bar to control um, the, the clutch so I don't have to use two hands to drop line back. Uh, I'm using 15 pound test braided line. It goes to 20 pound test fluorocarbon. At the end of the fluorocarbon is a perfection loop to which I attach a bucktail. In this case it's a three quarter ounce spro bucktail. One foot above the bucktail is a dropper loop with a 3-0 Gamagatsu bait saver hook. Both the uh, the bait saver hook and the bucktail are tipped with 4 inch Berkeley Gulp Alive swimming mullets and uh, in this case I'm using white, I'm also using chartreuse, those are both excellent colors. The technique is rapid vertical jigging, just bouncing the rod and the jig very hard, and for whatever reason, this really triggers fluke to strike. Um, on my YouTube channel, I have a similar video shot in deeper water, 20 to 30 feet of water on Long Island Sound, and I'm using the same technique and same tackle and so forth, and it works extremely well there as it does in this video. Also on my YouTube channel, I have an underwater view of this kind of fishing. I was able to rig up a camera um, down at the jig level and see how the fish approach the jig and how they hit it and how they trail it, and uh, it's very interesting. A little background on this trip. Uh, you'll notice it looks like uh, I'm the only boat on the water here. There's really nothing in the background. Um, this was actually my first trip to this particular area. And it's a Saturday morning in um, early August, a Long Island South Shore Bay, as I mentioned. And um, with a little bit of fog, I'm trying to stay away from the main channel. And the only thing I had to work off of in the beginning was I had one GPS mark that I had entered manually into my GPS um, using Google Maps. And um, I went out and I, I set up updrift of that mark, and I made one long drift of about 25 minutes or so. And when I hit two fluke pretty close together and then hooked up a double I immediately uh, made another mark with the GPS and then for the next uh, couple of hours I worked off of those two GPS marks 
and when all was said and done I ended up with 91 flukes so um, the trip worked out very well and um, you know the point is I really don't know this particular area all that well but this is a very deadly technique so that um, by covering water and then using my GPS to get the marks on the good spots where there's some fish and just keep working over those areas um, the trip worked out very well for me the rapid vertical jigging works just great on fluke but um, I haven't caught very many stripers doing this and this is not a way that I would fish for stripers but uh, for fluke fishing it's pretty hard to beat I try to barehand these shorts when I can. Um, if they're a little bit bigger or very feisty or so forth, um, you know, I won't hesitate to use a wet rag because the wet rag, uh, since it's wet, it, it preserves the slime coat, but it lets me control the fish by applying a minimal amount of pressure. And if you think about, you know, slimy fluke thrashing all over the place, uh, to control it, you have to squeeze a little bit. I don't want to squeeze too hard. So the, the wet rag uh, lets me get a grip on the fish without squeezing hard and I can quickly unhook it and get it back in the water in a hurry. I can usually catch approximately seven to ten fluke on a single gulp. Um, the ones that are on the hooks now are just completely beat up. Uh, I'll keep sticking them on any way that they'll go on as long as the tails aren't hacked up and as long as they'll actually be able to stay on the hook but um, these have gotten pretty beat up so I'll go ahead and put on a pair of new ones.
this fish is easily a keeper, so uh, I'll be a little careful. And I, I like to try to keep them in the net um, when they're in the kayak, or else they might get away. So this fish has given me a present, a nice, fresh, big peanut bunker. And uh, I'm a big gulp believer, but I'm not going to turn down a fresh peanut bunker like this. So I decided to put it up on the top hook and uh, see what happens. Well, that didn't take long. But the fish didn't hit the bunker. The fish hit the gulp on the bucktail. Um, I ended up not even using the peanut bunker after this. I just stayed with the gulp. You can see a yellow uh, rope tied to the middle of the kayak. It goes out to uh, a drift control sock. The breeze came up a little bit, which was a good thing as it blew the fog out. You can actually uh, see some boats in the background now. Um, but the drift speed got a little bit fast. I like it to be roughly 1 to 1.2 miles an hour and it had run up a little bit faster, 1.4, 1.5. So uh, on this particular drift I threw out the drift control sock and it works very well at knocking out uh, the wind component of the drift speed and getting it back to the range that I want. I often use a drift control sock on my boat as well and they make different sizes for different boats so it's just a very handy thing to have. So there's one of my favorite things about gulp is I just missed a fish and if I was using soft bait there's a good chance the fish would steal the bait but with the gulp they don't take it off the hook you can just put right back down and you know you know there's a fish there because you just had a hit and uh, it's just one of the many advantages of using gulp. I had a nice drift throughout this video uh, later in the trip when the tide turned I had a wind over tide situation I basically wasn't moving at all so I made a video on how I deal with that and uh, instead of vertical jigging I'll be casting across the current so you could check that video out on my YouTube channel.